So we've seen products, we've seen multiplication. What do you think we want to look at next? Division. If I have fractions of these things, how do they behave? So we can always come back to um, this work, writing out all of the factors and seeing how it simplifies. But eventually we want quicker methods so we don't have to take as much time solving these problems. But off the bat, I have a to the fifth up top, so that tells me a times a times a times a times a. Five times in total. And down below, I've got two factors of a. So can we simplify that at all? Yes, because I have same thing divided by the same thing is one, so we can cancel out those. We can get rid of another factor. So nothing else that we can simplify. So my base is still a, and I have them left over in the numerator. How many factors of a do we have? Three left. Okay, so is there a pattern? What are you noticing? Five minus two gives us three. Let's do another one. Same story here. Same base, and we have the division. I've got nine factors up top. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine factors of t. Four down below. So again, same thing divided by the same thing. Gone, gone, gone. How many factors of t do we have? One, two, three, four, five. So what do you notice? Nine minus four gives us five, what we have left up top. So for any non-zero number um, A, or any non-zero base, if we have the division, we look at subtracting the two positive integers. Okay. So let's start using that now to simplify these without writing out all of the factors. So we've got the same base, and we have division. So this is going to be 6 raised to the 5 minus 3, which is 2 which we could evaluate pretty simply, and 6 times 6 is 36. Might as well. Why not? And for part B, again, what is our power on x here? Unspoken 1, we have the same base in division. So we look at the difference, top minus the bottom, I've got 7 factors of x. And for part C, what is my base? 3t, 3t. So that'll be our base that's left here. Again, and we have division, so 12 minus 2. So how many are we left with? 10. And the last one. Do they match exactly the combination PQ? No, so we have to look individually at the P's, individually at the Q's. So how many factors of P am I going to have? 5 minus 2, 3. And how many factors of Q? 7 minus 5, 2. All right, and again, if you're not sure, you can write out all the factors like we've been doing in the beginning steps. It's just time-consuming. So we want to move away from that, move towards the succinct way to do it. Last little bit that we want to talk about, again, is that anything raised to the 0 power is 1, and y is 0 raised to the 0 power undefined. So we're going to look at those cases. So how can we rewrite a raised to the 0. Anything raised to the 0 power is 1. All right. So another way that we can look at this, what if I have a times a times a times a over a times a times a times a? I still got the same thing divided by the same thing, same thing divided by the same thing. We're still looking at 1. But, using this new method that we have, how can we rewrite this? How many factors of A do I have up top? How many factors of A do I have down below? So, when I have division with the same base, what do we do with the exponents? Look at the difference. We subtract them. So, 4 minus 4 gives me A to the 0 power, which is 1, which we've already seen before. So this is kind of the proof as to why. We could have the same factors or number of factors of our base up top and down below. We're looking at the difference, which is 0. And they all cancel to give us 1. And 0 raised to the 0 power, again, is not defined because we could have a similar setup. 
What am I looking at? If I have a raised to the 0 power, how else could I rewrite that? 0 raised to the anything. 1 minus 1. So what does that tell me? I've got one factor up above, one factor down below. Can I ever divide by 0, though? No, this is not defined. Not defined since we can't divide by 0. So just some little proofs, informal proofs, about why those are happening. So go ahead and take those next two examples, divide and simplify them. So there were really four, my bad, but hopefully you did them all. What are we looking at for A? Same base, do in division. So what do we do with the exponents? Subtract them. 5 minus 2, so I've got 4 to the third. And we could evaluate, simplify it down. We'll worry about that later. For part B, again, same base, and we're doing division. So we look at the difference. So I've got four factors of y all together. For part C, again, what is our power on this p in the denominator? 1, same base, doing division. So we look at the difference, top one minus the bottom. So I've got nine factors of p. And for part D, top and bottom don't match exactly, so our bases aren't, you know, this chunk together. So we need to look individually. How many factors of A do we have? Seven, six, five, four of them. And for B, how many factors do we have left? Six minus four, two. So get comfortable working with the product rule and the quotient rule. They're going to save you a lot of time on the test and even working on your homework.